On the video lecture when I proved that the absolute value of x plus y was bounded by two times the maximum of the absolute value of the endpoints, um, there was a request for clarification. Apparently it was a little confusing in there what had happened. Remember that was also where I had the wrong epsilon or the wrong delta and I had to redefine my delta on the fly there to make it work. So it might be my fault. So I just wanted to clarify that in this extra supplemental video. Uh, recall that this was from proving that f of x equals x squared is uniformly continuous as long as it was on a compact set. Essentially an R by the heine borel theorem that would be a closed bounded interval of course. So suppose x and y are in a closed bounded interval, a compact set in R, such as a to b. What is a bound on the size of x plus y? In other words, how big could x plus y, absolute value, actually become if x and y are stuck between a and b? Well, let's look at a number line here. Here's a number line, and there's the compact set a to b, but where in the world is Waldo? Just kidding, where is zero? Right? Zero could be in a few different places in this picture. We don't really know. For example, zero might be over here. And if zero were over here, then notice that a would be larger in absolute value than b is. So the absolute largest that x plus y could ever become would be somehow the absolute value of a times 2. right? Because this is going to be a bigger number than this one is going to be in absolute value. But what if zero was over here? Well, if 0 is over here, then both a and b are positive numbers. So which number is larger between a and b? b would be larger. And in this case, they're both positive, so the absolute value is actually extraneous. So you'd just be adding up to very, very large numbers. What if 0 was in between the two? Well, now notice that a would be negative and b would be positive. But in this case, we would have to worry about which one was larger in magnitude. For example, in the picture I've drawn with the point right there, if 0 was located right here, b would be larger than a in magnitude, whereas if the point were over here, then a would be larger in magnitude because it's a bigger negative number, bigger valued negative number. But in any case, if we need to find a bound on the x plus y, we just need to make sure that we make the number be as large as it can possibly be, really, really close to the endpoints. So that's what motivated me to define it to be, let's see, have to take the max, perform it on the absolute a and the absolute b, figure out which one of those is largest, right? And that would be the largest possible numerical value you could ever get for x or y. And then you double it, because take that point twice. There's nothing that restricts or a number that's really, really close to it even. And then it could be that would be the big bound, essentially. So let's see some examples here, so that way this makes complete sense. So pretend that x, y were taken from the interval negative 7 to negative 3. Well, in this case, the largest magnitude value you could ever take on would be 7, right? If I let x be negative 7 and y be negative 7, or essentially negative 6.999999, then the object inside of the absolute value would be negative 14, and so the bound would say that this would always be less than or equal to 14. What if both the numbers were positive, like in the second case, where x and y are taken from the interval 2 to 5? Well, now the biggest value x could ever take on would be like 5 on the right, and y could be very, very close to 5 also, so we'd end up getting a bound here of being less than or equal to the value of 10. Now here's the ones with 0 in the middle, right? Negative 2 to 4. So in this case, negative 2's absolute value is 2, 4's absolute value is 4, so in the biggest sense, we'd have to go 4 and really darn close to 4, and that would give us a big bound of 8. And finally, in the last case down here on the interval from negative 4 to 3, now what's the biggest magnitude number we could take on? It'd be negative 4 and effectively negative 4, which would give us again an 8, well negative 8 here, but inside of the absolute value gives me a bound of 8. So in each case, we ended up taking the absolute value, the biggest absolute value of which of the two endpoints of the interval, and then doubling it, and that gave us a bound on the absolute value of x plus y. I hope this helps to clarify.